All right, back with uh, Blogs and Balls 4. We're joined by Richard Deitch from uh, uh, SI and SI.com. Richard, thanks for joining us. Guys, uh, you are, I'm very impressed by this professional setup here. This is outstanding. I actually do this for a living. I do the TV side, actually, for a living. Believe me or not, oh, I do. I, based on this technology, I absolutely believe it now. Well, how it looks well, online. Should I, be, should I be looking at you or should I be looking at the camera? We're talking. Uh, we're talking. Yeah, we're right, talking. Like Unless you want to talk to our fans. No, I'd, rather talk to you. I'd rather talk to you guys. Right. What do you think about the, the event here today and, and how you plan on covering it? You on a panel, but how do you plan on covering it? I'm not, I, you know, usually for um, when I'm at conferences and stuff, uh, if something like really captures my attention or imagination, um, I'll usually cover it after the fact. Maybe contact some of the people who spoke and uh, and be in touch with them. At the moment, I'm not covering this. I came here as a panelist and mostly as an interested observer um, because a lot of the people who are on these panels, um, I think, are doing really good work. I find them really smart, um, and I'm just hoping that uh, you know maybe there's something I can learn from them and and able to incorporate in my own job. And speaking about sports media, which we all are interested in, uh, what to you right now is the bigger story that, that we all should be paying attention to? Is it the ESPN versus NBC type of thing, or is it going to be something like um, the bidding for the NFL down the road? Well, I think the thing, the great thing about the sports media is it's hard to rank like the, the most sports. There's like a, you could, as you both know, there's like 50 million stories a day. Um, some of the things that interest me right now because of the season we're in is I'm really curious to see if NFL ratings continue to go up. Um, they've reached like a point where I think all of us are like stunned like you know you're getting like 23 million people for a game on Sunday like is it possible that we can still see more and maybe we can. Um, so I find that interesting. Um, I'm certainly interested in um, in NBC Sports Network and versus his programming. I don't think anybody really can be a competitor with ESPN but I do think you can take um, small chunks and try to find certain places where maybe you can gain a little bit of their audience and I think they're very wise to do some of this NFL auxiliary programming because that is always going to draw well. Um, whether shows like Ravel's new show and other stuff remains to be seen but I admire and appreciate the effort that someone it seems like is going to at least make an attempt to try to take ESPN on. You're not going to be able to do that for many many years but you have to start somewhere. But, sorry about that. Quick review about uh, Darren Ravel's show what do you think of it you know I have not even written about this yet and I'm just saving it for my audience I, listen I'm gonna say this I like uh, Rovell's show has a shot to be interesting because nobody's doing it in the marketplace that's the best thing uh, about Rovell's show is that he has a topic to me that's interesting um, and that's different um, what I would say, though, and I've only seen the show once, and I like to see something. I'm not one of these people who, like, you can, I'm going to review Dan Lebertard's show one episode in. I, th I find that foolish. Um, but uh, I love the fact that somebody just walked in front of your camera. That's the second time that's happened. Sure leave that in no matter what. Um, but, you know, the one thing I'll say is... Um, it seems like they're positioning Rovell to kind of be like a, the Jim Cramer of sport, sports business, and that doesn't work. And I don't need 50 million gadgets. I don't need that stuff. I think if I was going to tell Rovell anything, and this is only based on one show, he really needs to get great guests because I think that could create some buzz. And the other thing is, and this is important, is he... Is he in the role of journalist asking these guys tough questions, or is he all in the role almost as a public relations person giving these guys the opportunity to promote their stuff? One show that I saw was like, I think there was someone from a sports memorabilia uh, place on, and I found that to be, to be very honest with you, almost more like a PR spot than, you know, real journalism there. And then there have been other spots that Darren has done where I think he's he's asked tough questions. So I think the show has to, you know, figure out, is it a, is it a, is it a sports business journalism show, or is it a, a show where you you know, famous sports business people come on and you give them a forum to sort of push their wares. Um, in terms of Darren as a personality and Aaron Sharoni, I, I'd be honest with you, I need to see them three or four or five times to really have a better feel. Uh, a lot of ESPN PR here. Are you uh, surprised or uh, checking in on what we do? What do you think? Surprised would not be the word. Uh, horrified could be the word. Uh, bothered. Uh, stupefied. Trying to think. I, the only good thing about that is that Josh Krulowitz, my favorite ESPN PR staffer, is not here. Um, which I, I don't think this city is big enough for the both of us. And being that I live here, it's my city. No, listen, I give ESPN PR credit. They obviously, there's a lot, there's a lot of bloggers here. 
and uh, you know they want to see what some of the people in the marketplace are saying, saying about them, saying about sports. So I think that's good. I will always have a war with ESPN PR, but I will never ever not say that I think they're a smart department, and I think they're proactive and progressive. And by sending their staff is here, I, I honestly think it's smart. So full marks to them. At the same time, the war with Josh Krulowitz and others will always continue. That is that is not a seven-year war. That is a seventy-year war. <laughs> Well, Rich, we appreciate your time. Here's a, here's a business card so you can spell my name right on the next uh, power rankings. <laughs> Look at that.